Hello monsters, how are you? My name's Kristen and welcome to my channel. After a year in quarantine, by Christmas, I was begging for anything that could make me happy. Holiday movies always help me feel better and luckily ABC was airing Rudolph for one night only. As a child, I always connected to Rudolph mainly for the fact that my last name was Rudolph and my birthday is only a couple days after Christmas, so I had a lot of nostalgia for me more than anything. Not having seen Rudolph in close to a decade, I was excited to watch my favorite animation from childhood, only to be horrified that this animation continues to be played. Is Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer one of the darkest animations created? When I first started out to do my research on this film, I was mainly focused on one thing, a toy, a dolly for Sue specifically. It only led me down a deeper rabbit hole, bigger than I could have ever imagined. What was once a beloved childhood movie was now tarnished, but I didn't see it all before. So I could start with the most obvious, Rudolph's dad is the worst, like the worst. Soon as he sees his son, first thing he does is reject him. Now how can you overlook that? His beak blinks like a blinking beacon. Then, Rudolph meets Santa. First thing Santa does when he meets Rudolph is reject him. Great bouncing iceberg. Now, I'm sure it'll stop as soon as he grows up, Santa. Well, let's hope so if he wants to make the sleigh team someday. I suppose all a part of a story about someone growing and maturing and beating the odds like Rudy, but still. A tad harsh. So first watching this, the first thing I noticed was a doll on the work table that looked a lot like the doll on the island of misfit toys. Upon further looking, it became very clear that all the toys created in this world all came from Santa or Santa's elves. Not a toy store, but Santa. Once realizing that, it's hard to imagine that there's an island made specifically for toys that were considered misfits. Even worse, Santa let those misfit toys out to the children knowing they weren't good enough, causing themselves to exile themselves. But maybe Santa had no clue that certain toys weren't being made correctly. Made correctly specifically by a certain elf who didn't like making toys. Why would he care if those toys went out correct? And I use air quotes around the word correct because what does that mean anyways? But I digress. More on that later. So the reason I figure that all the toys are made solely by Santa, how else do the toys on the island of misfit toys know about Santa? It all makes sense. They all come from Santa. So once Rudolph sets out on his adventure, he bumps into Hermes. One of the first things they declare is that they are independent which symbolically two ornaments fall from a Christmas tree showing their independence from the tree. Chalk it up to Christmas spirits, chalk it up to the breeze, or just chalk it up to the creators being hand in cheek with everything being independent. Rudolph, Hermes, and Cornelius finally get to the island of unwanted toys. They meet a very depressed sentry, along with the rest of the misfit toys, who are also very depressed. They begin to sing their haunting song, stating how bad they wanted off the island, which is funny, seeing as how Rudolph and his gang wanted on the island so badly, but weren't allowed because they weren't misfitty enough and also because they weren't toys. Each toy begins singing about why they're on the island, stating all the reasons they're misfits. Were all the toys depressed? A scooter for Jimmy and a dolly for Sue have no clear exterior problems. No real explanation for a doll that looks perfectly normal. Rankin, one of the creators, finally admitted in 2005 that dolly was suffering from psychiatric problems and caused from being abandoned. But maybe all of these toys have psychiatric problems. They're all very sad and depressed from not being played with, but worst of all, exiled. Maybe the question for Rankin shouldn't have been directed just solely at Dolly, when the schooler is always showing a frown. Did Hermes create all of the misfit toys? He would allow a slip up, given what we know about him and his lack of interest in toy making. Since we know the elves are responsible for putting the toys in Santa's bag, and it's only unwanted toys at the island, meaning they're already been owned since King Moonraiser is the only one who finds all the discarded toys that were unwanted 
meaning the toys aren't being discarded at the elves' workshop, but on Earth, where Santa delivers the toys. The only toys that the children receive all year, apparently. So the sad toy maker Hermes is bullied by his peers and elder for not wanting to make toys. Bullying has been known to cause depression for these people. So the main question was the story of Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer was it really about Hermes the whole time? Hermes coming to terms with the fact that toy making will never make him happy, even if it means to be shunned and exiled from your home. Christmas Town, what we know is apparently the only town besides the island of misfit toys. He goes on an epic adventure with another outcast, only to discover the very island that he created, an island of discarded and unwanted toys. Unwanted just like him, Look at all he hurt. Meeting all the toys, he knows now what he has to do. Find them a home like he himself needs. <laughs> Accepted for himself a place to be a dentist. So was Hermes the real hero? Was Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer really about Hermes' existential coming to terms with himself? To say Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer isn't a complex and dark film is an understatement. And an extra little tidbit about the movie. The original ending was changed. Rudolph didn't originally go back to the island to rescue the toys. It wasn't until the public expressed how mad they were for the fact that the toys were still forgotten. The creators later went back in and made it so Santa and Rudolph came back to rescue the toys. Otherwise, the original still forgot about them. Thank you so much for watching my video. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a big old thumbs up. It lets me know that you care and that I am doing an okay job. And also make sure to subscribe. It'll keep you in loop with upcoming video. And this was my first time doing a video like this with animation. So go easy on me and show me some love. And I worked really hard at it. Throw a comment out there. Let me know if you have any Rudolph theories. There are so many that I could have picked from watching this, but it was really fascinating to me about where the dolls came from, who created the dolls. And remember, this was all just in fun. Happy theorizing. Okay, everybody. Thanks for watching. Bye. Rudolph. Rudolph.